So I'm here with Fiona Devine uh, to mark six months since the launch of the Together We Can Build It campaign, which aims to raise £5 million and um, to build the first children's hospice in Berkshire. Hi Fiona. Hello Lucy. Hello, thank you for taking time to talk to us today. So um, it's been six months since the launch um, of the campaign. I mean, how quickly has the six months gone so far? Oh, as always with these things, it's gone incredibly quickly and, um, you know, I can't believe we're six months into the campaign, but it's been very exciting, it's been um, very rewarding, and um, yes, we're delighted to sort of be on this road, finally raising all this money to build our children's hospice. And over the last six months, um, if you could think of maybe the most memorable moment that you've had, perhaps the most um, surprising donation or a specific event, I mean, what would it be? I think it was actually the launch itself. I think um, we had a couple of major donors that really kick-started that off for us in a, in a really beautifully um, generous manner. Um, so Michael was fantastic at the event, um, really sort of rallied the troops, um, explained the need and about, you know, championing your local community um, for those less fortunate and more vulnerable um, than yourself. And just the goodwill, I think, generally since that point within the community has just been amazing. And when you mentioned that there were a couple of um, donors who kind of initially started off the whole um, fundraising aspect um, of the project, can you say how much they donated? Um, both with six-figure sums, um, which um, gave us a grand total of over 300,000. So you've raised 673,000 pounds so far. How pleased are you with that total? Are you on track? We would always like to be doing um, better, um, but I think yeah, that's that's just you know, by nature of what you do. You're always pushing yourself further and harder. Um, yes, we are just six months in, so that's just purely what we've raised since we launched in November. Um, so we are doing not too badly, but we will continue to do better. What would happen um, if you didn't reach? £5 million within two years. Do you need a certain amount before you can actually start building? I think in um, a cause and a campaign like this, it's very um, easy to let your heart rule your head. Um, but, you know, we are, um, in sort of to all intents and purposes, a business, and you have to run like a business in terms of risk and good governance. And, you know, this is not our money. This is money that the general public and, and people work very hard to give us and are very generous in their donation. So we will, regardless of whether we make the five million in two years or not, we will build this children's hospice. Um, we've set ourselves the target of raising five million in two years so that we can actually start the build in the autumn of this year. Um, however, if we don't manage it, um, which I'm sure is not going to be the case, um, it just means that we can't start the build as early as we would like to. Um, how has the um, Together We Can Build It campaign helped, so working with Maple? Express to promote it's been amazing and I don't think that we could um, embark on a campaign like this without the support of the local paper and they have been amazingly supportive and you know we are making history really and I think for them to be a part of that and recognize that has just been wonderful so it has resulted in us for actually direct referrals for children and um, you know, increased awareness with the, the public domain, which has again resulted in donations to the charity. We cover stories um, almost every month, probably more, about um, different groups and organisations and businesses raising money mm -hmm. um, for, for the charity. I mean, how does that make you feel that so many people are getting involved? Just incredibly proud and, um, you know, I mean, it is, I can't say any other word, and actually it's really very little to do with me and all to do with Alexander, which is what I always say, you know, he was the absolute guiding light and the shining light, really, in, in all that we do. And, you know, it's testament to him that this is his sort of legacy. Um, and incredibly proud. Um, and to know that, you know, the charity has such a good reputation and is so well received locally, um, you know, that just makes me feel, you know, quite humble, really. And what's the reaction been like from other parents um, who have been in your situation before, who have lost a child or have children going through terminal illnesses? What's the reaction been like from them? Um, I think in terms of needing the service, they absolutely recognise that. And um, I think, you know, can't wait um, for it to be built. Um, you know, it's an incredibly difficult journey and they have obviously, um, for lots of our families at the moment, other priorities in terms of caring for their sick um, children. But I think, you know, they know the value of having something locally. How much of a difference would a hospice like this have made to yourself 
and your husband um, when Alexander was ill? I think it would have given us as a family um, a coping mechanism um, that we didn't have. Um, and, you know, it's the same for lots of families. Quite often, you know, you're dealing with all the emotional and mental sort of strains and physically as well um, of dealing with a child that's life limited. And we have two other children as well. So quite often other families will have siblings as well. Um, and just to have something locally that doesn't take you away from your support network or the professional healthcare professionals that are there for your child in terms of your GP or your paediatrician or the, the team from the local hospital. It's really important to have that continuity of care and for it all to be joined up and seamless. And that's what we didn't have. And that's what I recognized as a need quite early on in his condition. Traveling out of county to receive that specialist care does not work. It's not safe. It's it doesn't help the children or the family and it's something as a county we ought to be providing and I feel very strongly about that. This makes the difference between sometimes coping and not coping but giving those families and that child a special safe environment to be but creating special memories as well. You know, we are really indebted and you know really amazed constantly by the generosity of, of, of the people of Berkshire and the surrounding counties and you know Please, this is such an important project and to be part of it, you know, everybody gets something from that um, and we just desperately need to do this. And the sooner that we can get started in terms of the build, um, the quicker that we can be helping these children and families. So I guess if I had a wish list right now, the top of it would be a very sympathetic builder. That's what I need now. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fiona. You're very welcome. Thank you very much.